talk about that a whole lot, man. The last couple of weeks we've been speaking and Sunday nights, chapel services and stuff, man. We've been talking about that reviving and that changing and that shift, man, that's going on. And, and better days are coming, man. But I, I believe they're here, but they're coming as well, man. Amen. And, uh, you know, w- one of the ways that, that I get to see that happen, man, is through guys like, like John and these girls and you guys that are here, man, and, and uh, different people, man. So, John, come here real quick, man. I just want you to share... Uh, take two minutes, man. Share what I've done in your life, man. Since, since the goat incident, man. I'll never forget about that. Probably one of the greatest things I've done. Honestly, today is 317 days I've been playing sober. Hallelujah. And that kind of carried on a mountain, but didn't get my heart to use. Amen. That's the best thing I've done in my life. And uh, before that, I was, I mean, I was lost, man. I, my heart was empty. I was trying to find something. I was masking after the alcohol. The drug, I had to cut the end of this. I had to cut the end of this. And I was running wild. It was like, I did good for a while. Most of me was, and I did good for a while. I was not very angry with you. And I was and I still hold the torch, thank God. And uh, I, was, I thought having a job in my dream was going to fill my heart with happiness, but it didn't. I mean, it was, I, I found myself in bar school, you know, and I was like, when I get party and hang out and fight, it was miserable. And, uh, the good story, I was actually at the bar one night, wasn't satisfied with, with, with all the alcohol, so I decided I'm going to do some drugs, go down there and go to the pool, and uh, I was, was a friend of mine, I thought he was a friend of mine, but I would hang out with these dudes, and, you know, you can, I mean, you all been there. You can tell them this stuff is out. I mean, they're about to run into the run into the guy. I said, I'm I'm out of here. I stood up. And I stood up on the attic place and put the hands on them. They were playing on doing something bad. And uh, I waved some strong so probably 20 degrees outside and I was I mean my pants were frozen, my legs, my my boots are full of soap, I was frozen solid. And uh, I was walking in the I don't remember where it was, somewhere in Brooklyn. And it was good. Yeah. I'm out of nowhere. And I kept telling them, go back to where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't need that goat. I don't need you. It's like, this is kind of tricky now. And then I was like, man, I got to do something. I, was, I thought I was going to die out there. So I had to on the way to the door. Ended up being caught. The cop cop was on duty. So she's like, well, hold on a second. Wait a second. And she doesn't call the cop. And he shows up. He's like, dude, what are you doing? I was like, I need to get out of here. I was like, I'm going to get home in the shower. These people are trying to kill me. And, um. Uh, he yeah, actually put me in my vehicle. He said, where would you get to go to that? I was like, I don't know, that's one of the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he booked the goat in, he puts it in the back of the cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> he lets me ride in front with him. I was like, oh, that's not <laughs> <laughs> And he, he said to me, he said, man, what are you, are you? I stopped talking to him. I told my dick, what are you doing out here? I was like, honestly, I don't know, man. And it's like, I wasn't thinking, I mean, I mean, we all been having that heavy drug use, and we didn't get to drink in there. He said, if you're not going to keep going. And I got to meet him, and I was down there, and my aunt, she was like, you gotta meet this Josh guy, you gotta meet this Josh guy. I went down there, and I was like, man, I don't want to do this. So he said, he's been down there for a year, and his friend's still down there. I was like, you're kidding. And everybody's singing like we already had, like, man, this ain't for me. So I went down there, and I stopped up here, and We've been all over like Southern West Virginia, all over Northern Virginia, coming to Pennsylvania. We were all on the top of the choir down there. Uh, we were all over the place. I mean, I've seen some basic change playing. That's how I can that's how I know Jesus Christ is great. Amen. Amen. And I was in that program about nine months, nine and a half months, and right now I'm over ten months. Uh, I started doubting myself. I mean I took it out long, but this is just the same for me. I started so I made a tune and go on. I ended up getting some trouble down there. But that was the devil, honestly. Ten months into the program, three sober, was playing on my head. He had me convinced that I didn't need to be there anymore. That God wasn't working for me. I wasn't good enough to please anybody. He was like, and uh, I was actually going to drop out of the program down there. Because he literally had me to the point that I was done. I was done. And you think he can't come get you after being sober that long, he will. Mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you that message, right. but don't give in to it. Amen. 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 Amen.
And Brad Ware got us. He, he yeah. probably know, you know. Jim was preaching, and he was like, I need the, the spirit kept coming. I'm going to mention the title, though. Because somebody, somebody in here is like, the devil's going to destroy you. And uh, Brad was like, man, if Jim don't come up, I'm going out there as soon as I'm talking. And Brad said, as soon as he said that, Jim called him up there. And Jim and Brad went up there. He's like, I got a message from somebody in here. The devil is going to destroy you. And he's like, he's right now, he's got you where he wants you. And he's about, he's going to destroy your life. He's like, I got the warning right now. And he looked very mean. There, there I was, repenting on my face again. <laughs> and uh, after, I mean, and after that day, like, I felt ever since, that overwhelming sense of peace. Again, but it's like after being saved again, because he, he had a hold of me, and it's just good to show. That's why I wanted to share it. Because once, I mean, once you're walking in the righteous path of God, I mean, he'll, he'll drag you, put you in, and it's easy, it's easy for him to get you now. I mean, people are struggling, like, I mean, we all, Struggle with God for the people in here. There's no, that's not the way to do it. If I can preach the message to anybody, I would, I would walk the righteous path of Jesus and I'll let him get to you. In the name. Amen. 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 I told you, man, it's not as easy as what he made it sound to be. I come to find out that's what one of the top three hardest rehabs in the United States. And I got 33 days left in that. Amen. Let's get strong. I mean, follow, follow the Lord. I mean, that's all. I mean, you don't want anybody, I mean, your friends, like, I'm struggling out right now. I'm like, I told you. I if you don't like the person I can come, I mean, maybe you don't be a friend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Truth. You got to walk up on the line. You that's right. Like Joshua told me, you can't get a devil in here and a devil in there. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You can follow that line and you're going to walk that line. That would be that good. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Praise for me, too. I'll praise for y'all. <laughs> well, man, praise the Lord. God, God can do good things out of boat stories, man. Amen. <laughs> as, funny as, as funny as that sounds, man, uh, that was the truth. That's how lost he was, man. And you should have heard it when he first told me the story about the ghost. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of put me on spot there, but there, there's a police report on my phone. So. Yeah. I, was, I was texting the medical unit when he was talking. I'm like, I need y'all to come down here now. And, uh, uh, and it was, uh, I'm proud of you, man. And John, I, I, I really believe this, man. I believe as you were speaking, the Lord spoke in my heart. You're going to be a man of perseverance, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's, that's what it is. When you go through it and you struggle, and you get back up and you don't stop and you put one foot from the other. That's perseverance. And, and you're going to be a great man of perseverance. You're going to shine. You're, you're going to show that everywhere that you go, man. You're going to have, you're going to have opposition. You're going to have struggles. Mm -hmm. so you're going to be a man that's defined by perseverance mm -hmm. in, in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I didn't hit this life by following the devil. That's it. That's it. So I go, I give all the glory to God. Amen. 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 So there's going to be some bad days, man. We heard it. You know, we, we, we just talked about, and let's pray real quick. I forgot to pray for Jordan and Caitlin, man. Let's pray real fast. Father God, I just come to you right now. I pray for Jordan and Caitlin right now, God. And you know there's similar issues there, God. Lord, I just pray, God, that, that first of all, God, I don't, I don't pray that you would convict. And, and, Lord, I just pray right now that you would send your love upon them. Wrap your loving arms around them in a way, God, that they know that you love them unconditionally, God. Lord, I pray right now, God, that there be that 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 wooing, not not yes. guilt, not shame, God, that wooing, that, that yes. drawing that would draw them to you, God, up into your loving arms. God, I pray that you would do that right now. Lord, mm -hmm. I pray that, that that the searching would stop, that the fear would stop, yes. that the that the thought process trying to figure it out would stop, God. Yes. And I pray that they would both come to have a blind faith, God. Just hear it from somebody that they love and then jump into it. Lord, I pray that you would rescue them. God, get them in a place of safety in Jesus' name. Send yes. our hearts ablaze for you, God, yes. for the things of you, God. Yes. Lord, we'll give you the glory for that. God, it's going to be a testimony in here, God. I believe Amen. that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So there's going to be some bad days. How many of y'all struggle with some of those bad days? Man, the better days are coming. This is the message of Zephaniah's prophecy, right? He was the great-grandson of King Hezekiah. So you can think about it that way, and if you know who that was, he, he was a cousin of Josiah, king of Judah. So he came from, he had families that were kings and, and were in royalty, and were all these different places. And, and, and Zephaniah became a contemporary, came after the prophet Jeremiah, and, 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 and he's crying out. He's got this message that's twofold, and he's screaming to the people, to God's people, there's going to be some bad days. 
There's going to be some days that throw you off. There's going to be some days, I call it stepping on your air hose, man. If someone's going to stumble, come and step on your air hose. Take the wind out of your lungs. You know you know what that feels like when you just get punched in the gut by life, man. And it's like, oh, I cannot believe that just happened. There's going to be those days that come. But And, and, and how do we know that? In Zephaniah chapter 1, listen, listen to verse 12, what it says, man. In verse 12, it says, it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps. And I will punish the men who are settled in complacency, who say in their heart, the Lord will do no good, nor will he do no evil. And I just want to stop there for just a minute, man. Um, he says, I'm going to punish those who are stagnant in spirit. Right? What's it mean to be stagnant? This pond right here is spring fed. There's a spring back in that corner that trickles water down into that pond. So it's not stagnant. It doesn't stink. Right? When the water gets stagnant, it starts to stink and get all the slime on it. You would never want to go in it, man. It's gross. You stir it up, it looks normal, and it's got that sulfur smell, like, like just nasty. And, and this is spring fed. So there's something constantly coming into it that keeps it fresh, that keeps fish being able to be alive, and tadpoles, and all those frogs you see in there, and all those different things, man. But he says there's, there's going to be men who are stagnant in spirit, and that's who I'm going to come against. He said, I'm bringing a light. I'm bringing this lamp, man. 